Okay, here in this video, I am going to go over multi-step dimensional analysis. Here we will be using two or more conversion factors in one problem. For example, if I have 125 kilograms and I want to convert it to centigrams, I must first find the bridge unit that gets us from the original unit, kilograms, to the new unit of centigrams. So what I like to do is kind of set up a little little visual diagram, all right? And I have to say to myself, what unit in the middle, somewhere between kilograms and centigrams, will help bridge that gap to help me solve this problem, okay? So what I come up with is the unit grams, all right? Now on my conversion factor sheet that you all have, you know that you have a conversion factor that has kilograms and grams, this is going to be your conversion factor one in the problem. And then you can also find one that has grams with centigrams. This is going to be your conversion factor two in this particular problem. So let's, let's take a look and see how we set it up. Again, keeping the five rules in place, the first thing I want to do is put the original over one. So I have 125 kilograms. I'm gonna make that a fraction, put it over one. Then I'm going to insert my first conversion factor. Okay, my first conversion factor is kilograms to grams. All right, so I know that on my conversion factor sheet that one kg equals a thousand grams. That's the one I'm gonna use right here has both the, the units, kilograms and grams. All right, this is exactly what we need. Now, remember, in order to cancel the units, I had said earlier in a previous video that the, kil the, the unit that's here, the kilograms, must go on the opposite level. So if I put kilograms on the bottom, I have to put grams on the top. Now fill in the numbers. The one goes next to the kg, the 1,000 goes next to the grams. This will allow me to cancel out my kilograms. Now I'm left with grams, but grams is not the unit I'm converting to. Remember, I'm converting to centigrams. Therefore, I must insert my second conversion factor. Okay, my second conversion factor deals with grams and centigrams. Okay, so if I look at my sheet, I know that one gram equals 100 centigrams. Now again, you can find these on your conversion factor sheet. Okay, this is nothing that you need to memorize. All right, so looking at the unit that I currently have still left in my problem, well, I need to get rid of it. How do I get rid of it? Putting it on an opposite level. So I'm gonna put grams down here. Think of this as two problems in one. So if I put grams down here, then the other unit is centigrams. That's gonna go on top. All right, then I look at my conversion factor. The one goes next to the G. I'm gonna put that in there. And then the 100 goes next to the CG, which is gonna go right there. All right, so I can cancel out the units that are available to cancel. Remember, canceling units, you must need, you need two, and they must be on opposite levels. Now, the one that I do have left is centigrams. Centigrams, I don't have anything on the opposite level here, so I can't cancel out, but that's okay. All right, centigrams is what I'm converting it to, so I need to have this still in play. All right, so now, step four, multiply the numerator. You got 125 times 1,000 times 100 equals 12,500,000. I'm going to put the CG here because it's still left. And then I'm going to multiply the denominator. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. Now step 5, simplify. And we know that anything divided by 1 is itself. Therefore, 125 kilograms is the same as 12,500,000 centigrams. Okay? So let's recap. We figure out what that bridge unit is going to be that's going to get me from our original to our new. All right, and whatever we use here, 
is going to fill in that missing piece for that first conversion factor. And then it's also going to be the start of the missing piece for our second conversion factor. All right. Think of it as almost a Venn diagram. All right. If you remember those from, from class, Venn diagram. All right. You have what they both share in common that sits in the middle. All right. Let's take a, let's take a look. All right. Let's take a look at another example. All right. We'll call it example number two. All right, example number two, let's say I have 80,000 seconds and I want to convert that to hours. Okay, well, just like my other one, I'm going to find that bridge unit between seconds and hours. So I'm just going to kind of set it up. Seconds. All right, my missing piece and then hours. All right, so what unit do you think would go here? And you're probably thinking minutes, okay, which is correct. All right, so my first conversion factor is going to be with seconds and minutes. We'll call this CF1. And then my second conversion factor is going to be minutes to hours, which will be CF2. So let's figure out what those conversion factors are. Seconds and minutes, something that's equal. Well, we know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. So that's going to be our conversion factor one. And then we know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, so that's conversion factor number two. All right, so now let's set it up. Again, rule number one, original over one. We're going to make it a fraction. So I have 80,000 seconds. We're going to make that a fraction. Put that over one. And then we're going to multiply it by our two conversion factors. So let me just kind of set up the, the problem here. Okay. All right. Now, again, we're starting with seconds. We want to convert that to hours. So we got to get rid of seconds. So seconds is going to go down here. All right. So I'm going to be using this conversion factor first. So if I got 60 seconds on the bottom, I have one minute on the top. That allows me to cancel out the seconds, get rid of them. Now I'm left with minutes, all right? I still got to convert the minutes to the hours, all right? So I put my minutes on the opposite level in my second conversion factor box, all right, which is going to be 60 minutes. And then on the opposite side, on the top part of the fraction will be one hour all right so now i can cancel out my minutes it leaves me with hours and that's okay because hour is the new unit that i'm converting to see i can't cancel hours out with anything there's nothing over here all right so now i'm ready to go i'm ready to go to step four multiply the numerator Eighty thousand times one times one is eighty thousand and i'm just gonna I'm going to throw the hour in there because that's the unit that's that's left okay and then i multiply the denominator all right 60 times 60 gives me 3600 all right so now i'm ready to simplify so i take the 80,000 divided by the 3600 and that gives me 22.2 hours okay almost a full day all right, so 80,000 seconds equals 22.2 hours. Hope this helps. We will talk more and discuss more in class as we, as we move forward. But this is a basic video on how you do multi-step dimensional analysis. And feel free to view as much as you need.